Hey there and welcome back to Best Practice TV. What we're doing in this series of videos is just going through ISO 9001, 2015 and giving you guys a real good how-to guide. Obviously a bunch of this is my opinion and it's subjective and it's open for discussion and please challenge me uh, if you've got any differences of opinion, comment below the video. So in this episode we're going to go through sections 1 and 2 of ISO 9000 2015, just have a really light introductory discussion and then we'll move on in other videos through the other parts of the standard. Okay, when we look at section one of ISO 9015, and if you've been following these videos, this isn't the first video in the series because it's not where I think you should start. So please go back to the beginning of the playlist in the channel and have a look through some of those videos. Have a look for the other episodes uh, and, and look at the series. So today we're talking about, or in this session, we're talking about uh, section one scope. And I'll just quickly touch on what the standard says and then I'll give you some guidance and some ideas on how to go about approaching uh, this part of the standard. So this international standard uh, is about the requirements for quality management system when an organisation needs to demonstrate its ability to consistently provide products and services that meet customer and applicable, applicable statutory and regulatory requirements. Um, and, and it's an organisation that aims to enhance customer satisfaction through the effective application of the, obviously that system system, including processes for improvement of the system and assurance of conformity to customer and applicable statutory and regulatory requirements. That is a massive mouthful. Um, and I think people get lost. Look, at the end of the day, this whole concept, and we campaign here at Best Practice, is this theory of winning formula and understanding that the winning formula is there, obviously so that you can win, but for high-performing organisations and other organisations who wish to become high-performing organisations to have a process of self-evaluation. So I think what's really important, particularly you know, day to day with your team and the people, you know, an organisation's obviously made up of a bunch of people, whether it's you and you're going to have more people join you or whether you've got 10, 15, 20,000 people, it really doesn't change. I think what's really important is to understand that this self-evaluation, this improvement system applies to this team, it applies to this department, it applies to this division. Those are the things to consider as you go forward. So as we look at all the requirements of the international standard being generic, they're intended to be applicable to any organisation and I've seen this done in organisations with 400,000 staff. I've also seen it uh, you know, applied to organisations with one staff member and that company just works a couple of days a week. Uh, the intention is that you can look at and apply and have a think about every part of this standard all the way through, which I think is a great thing and something to take on board. Too often people say, oh, you know, that doesn't really apply to an organisation like ours. I think I'm going to reiterate that point. This is about a system of self-evaluation and, and in my view, every organisation should have a business plan. You should check in with how you're going with that business plan and that business plan is ultimately going to be what's going to help you grow. And ISO 9001 is a really great basis for writing a very basic business plan, if nothing else. Let's look at section two. Um, and section two really just starts to introduce that, you know, ISO 9001 is a whole document. Um, there's a family of standards attached and there's a whole bunch of fundamentals and vocabulary that are part of ISO 9000. Now a common misconception out there in industry is that people refer to ISO 9000 as being the document. It's not the case. So ISO 9001 and 1 is an interesting number in all of the different series of ISO, 9000, of ISO standards and that is that it's the system standard and it's the standard that sets up, if you like, the framework or the guideline to follow. So look for that one in the series of the management system standards, whether you're referring to ISO 14000 and one, the new draft ISO 45001, all those sorts of things. You can go through those series and look for that clause one. Um, and all of those families have a complementary document, uh, which is fundamentals and vocabulary. So just to get everybody uh, on the right page there, ISO 9001 is not the standard, it's just the dictionary definitions. Looking at section three of ISO 9001 2015, it just talks about terms and definitions. And there's different references to terms and definitions as you go through the standard. I'm not going to go through those in detail today. I think they're best read and understood and applied in the context of your organisation. Again, if you've got any comments, comment below in this video and we'll monitor those comments and respond to you. Uh, or you can email us uh, at Best Practice Headquarters. So um, we'll finish up there with this video series and we'll move into the next video 
uh, which is section four, context of the organisation. See you soon.